All right, 6.3, um, it makes sense that after we multiply polynomials, today we got to learn how to divide polynomials. Um, two basic ways I'm going to show you how to do it. The long way, which is not always fun, but sometimes necessary, long division. And then the other way is called synthetic division. And I will always choose synthetic division if I can, um, but you can't always use it. So let's quickly refresh ourselves on long division. So let's just say... Uh, I'm just going to make this up, 5, 2, 6, 1. So I want to see how many times 4 goes into 5,261. So 4 goes into 5 one time, and then you multiply the top and the outside. And then you always subtract here, so that gives me 1. And I bring the 2 down. 4 goes into 12 three times. 4 times 3 is 12. And that one gives me 0. But I bring the 6 down. 4 goes into 6 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. Got to subtract there. 6 take away 4 is 2. Slide the 1 down. 4 goes into 21 5 times. And 5 times 4 is 20. And then there's 1 left over. All right? And this little 1 we refer to as the remainder. Okay? So that is the remainder. And when you're first learning how to do this, we would say, oh, the answer is 13, 15, and then we would say R1, remainder of 1. And then as you get a little bit older, you're like, well, we can actually go 13, 15, and then you can put your remainder on the top, and on the bottom, you put your outside number. So we'd say, oh, it's 13, 15, and 1 quarter, you know, or 0.25. So we're going to have the same idea of putting that remainder on the top, but we're going to be doing it with, uh, with polynomials. So let's jump right into it. So that big expression there, what I want to do is I want to make sure that it is in standard form. So I need to, kind of the first thing I need to do, is I need to put this in standard form, and then I need to write in Kind of put that in quotes. I need to write in missing terms. All right, so I want to write in the missing terms. Um, so, like, so I'll kind of show you as I do this. So, if you notice, I have standard form x to the third is the biggest. So I'd have three x to the third. Uh, x squared would come next. 4x squared, and I don't have an x term, so I need to write that in. So I'm going to put plus 0x. That's what I refer to as the missing term. And then we have our constant. So basically you have to account for everything in descending order, all powers going all the way down. And now I'm on the outside. I have x minus 2. So here's what we do. i got to figure out how many times does x go into 3x cubed. So it's kind of like reverse distributive property a little bit, or like the greatest common factor thing. So to multiply x, I would multiply that by 3x. So 3x times x will give me an x, and i got to multiply by 3x squared. Because 3x squared, now when I multiply it out, I'll get 3x cubed, you know, going, kind of multiplying this piece by that piece. And now i got to do the minus 6x squared part. So minus 6x squared. Now I put my line across, and I have to subtract that. So 3x cubed minus 3x cubed, that's gone, nothing there. Now I have to do 4 take away a negative 6. got to be really careful. You know, this takeaway out here, do not kind of forget about that, because that's going to affect signs in there. So 4 take away a negative 6, that's going to be 10x squared. And I slide uh, the next term down. I could even write more, but I usually just do the next one. Now i got to see how many times x can go into 10x squared. So x goes into 10x squared 10x times. So now, I'm kind of going slow here and drawing arrows and stuff, where normally I wouldn't, wouldn't do all this. But now I have to do the 10x times both of those pieces. So 
and times these two pieces. And when I do that, I will have 10x squared subtract 20x. All right. And I got to remember I am taking away these two rows. So I got 10x squared minus 10x squared is 0. Then I have 0 take away a negative 20. So that's going to be positive 20x. Bring my, bring my plus 10 down. And now x goes into 20x. How many times? Put those in there positive 20 times. Now I got to come back and I have to multiply that number on the outside by my 20. So it kind of just keeps repeating this process over and over and over. Well, I meant for that to be thin, but oh well. So I get 20x minus 40. And I got to remember to subtract those two, being very careful with my signs. So 20x minus 20x is 0. 10 minus a negative 40, well, that's going to be 50. And there's nothing left to bring down. So this is my remainder. Now, how we're going to express our answer is we're going to express our answer with exactly what's on top, 3x squared plus 10x plus 20. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go plus, and we're going to put this remainder down here, we'll put this little 50 over this outside expression. So the final answer is right there. So you always just slap the remainder on top of the number that's on the outside. All right, moving on down. So we will try another one. And another one with long division. So I'm going to move a little quicker on this one, a little bit less talking. Uh, maybe you could try this one on your own, pause the video and then come back and see how you're doing. But I have 3x plus 1 divided by, well, I actually said that backwards. I have 15x squared plus 8x minus 12. It already was in standard form. I wasn't missing any terms, so I'm good to go. So divided by 3x plus 1. So 3x goes into 15x squared 5x times. And that's going to give me 15x squared plus 5x. Remember to subtract those. 8 take away 5 is 3x. Slide the 12 down. 3x goes into 3x positive 1 times. And that's when I multiply that out, I get 3x plus 1. Looks like I'm going to have negative 11 left over. So my final answer is going to be 5x plus 1. And then this one's going to be minus, because it's the negative 11, minus 11 over 3x plus 1. So that one went a little quicker, had a little bit less terms, um, but not the most fun. Like I would much rather use synthetic division if I have the choice. So I'm going to kind of show you how that works next. All right, synthetic division. What's nice about synthetic division is we're pretty much just going to be using the coefficients. Um, but we still have to make sure that it's in, um, you know, descending order. It's, it's still got to be standard form. So standard form has to happen. Um, we still have to put zero if we have any missing terms. All right, so that's all still part of the game. Here, here's where it kind of changes a little bit. What you want to do, kind of similar to zeros and factoring, you want to figure out when is this expression going to equal zero? All right, so when does x minus 3 equal 0? Well, it's when x equals negative 3. So that's actually the number, um, or it's actually positive 3, excuse me. That's actually going to be the number that I use um, for, for my divisor on this one. So you can kind of just think of it as being the opposite. You're going to use the opposite of what's in parentheses there. And here's how you set it up. You put the 3, all right, so... Maybe I'll just kind of write this 3 is this 3. And then you're just going to put all the coefficients from up top. You know, So for x to the 4th, I have a 1. For x to the 3rd, I have a negative 2. Uh, I don't have an x squared. So we have a 0x squared. So i got to put a 0 in here. And then we have a 3x. 
and then we have a positive 1. And so you don't really need to write this down, but right now I'm just going to kind of put, you know, this is x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x's, and then our numbers or our constants. So I have all those place values in, and we're ready to rock and roll. So here we go. What you do here is, <clears throat> step one, you bring the first term down. So I'm just going to kind of slide this one down to, to get me started, basically. And I put the one there. And now I'm going to multiply. I'm going to go 3 times 1. So I'll kind of use arrows on this one. I'm going to go 3 times 1, which is 3. And then I'm going to add these two together. And negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So now I'm going to go 3 times 1. I'm going to add those two rows together, and I get 3. And then I'm going to go 3 times 3, which is 9. I'm going to add those rows together, and I get 12. And I'm going to go 3 times 12, which is 36. And I'm going to add those rows together and get 37. Now, your final number over here, that is the remainder. All right? So this is the remainder. Now, how you express your answer is whenever you have like an x to the fourth and you're dividing it by an x, the first term is going to be one less than the x to the fourth. So really this is going to be x to the third. This is going to be x squared. This is going to be your x. This is going to be your number. And then this is going to be the remainder which I'm going to put on top of, you know, just like we did in long division. I'm going to put that up on top of what we started with. So it's a lot of multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. And you're not dealing with all the x's. You kind of just put those in at the end. Um, the key part is to remember to start with one less than what you began with. So let's try another one. <clears throat> Kind of the more you do, the, the faster you kind of see what's going on. So, huh, looks like this example. Um, is it the same example? Let's scroll up. Well, that's unfortunate. So we're going to change this. So right now in your notes, I guess I'll be able to see who did their notes or not. Right now in our notes, we're just going to kind of X that out. I'm going to make up a new one. All right, so let's replace this with n to the fourth plus n to the third minus 11n squared minus 4n minus 30. So all of that. And I made it kind of nice because it's in standard form and it doesn't have any missing terms. Divided by n plus 4. All right, so we want to use synthetic division. So... What we are going to do is the first thing is we need to figure out you know, when is this going to equal 0 over here. So when is n plus 4 equal to 0? Well, it's when n is negative 4. It's the opposite. So I put my negative 4 here. Now i got to put all the coefficients. So i got 1, 1. Looks like negative 11, negative 4, and negative 30. So i got all my coefficients. I've made sure that I'm not missing any powers, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And now here we go. Here comes the game. So I slide the 1 down to get me started. Now I multiply. Negative 4 times 1, negative 4. Add those up. Multiply. Add those up. Multiply. Add those up. And multiply. And add those up. Remember, this is the remainder. So some kids like to work backwards instead of trying to remember that, hey, you know, if we're starting by an end of the fourth and we're dividing by an end of the first, um, it's going to be end of the third. Sometimes they just start at the back side and they know that this is going to be the constant. This is going to be the x to the first power. This is going to be the x squared. And this is going to be the x cubed. So you could start from the constant and work the other way. Or you could just remember to do one less. Um, 
And then we had a remainder of two, so we have to do plus two over whatever our, our divisor there was, n plus four. So final answer, boom, 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 boom. Now, if I were you, I would always use synthetic division if you can because it's way faster. Um, the only time you cannot use synthetic division is if this term outside here is not linear. If it's not a line, then you're in trouble. Then you're actually going to have to do long division. So, for instance, if I would have said, like, you know, hey, let's divide it by n squared plus 4. Now you can't, now you can't use synthetic division. It's kind of out the window, and you have to use long division. Um, one other thing that may came up, come up, I'm not going to do a full example, but let's say that you get something like this. Say you divide by 2n minus 3, all right, and you're like, oh, you know, what am I going to put now over here in this outside number? Well, you just set the thing equal to 0. So you'll get 2n equals 3 and n equals 3 halves. And now you would start it off with 3 halves as your outside number. And you'd still, you know, line up all your coefficients, da -da 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 -da, get your remainder, and you'll be good to go. So sometimes you'll have a fraction out there if there's a coefficient in front that kind of screws things up. So you'll see a few of those in the homework. All right, last but not least, the remainder theorem and synthetic substitution. So synthetic division is also kind of useful uh, to evaluate polynomials. So remember what evaluate means. It just means find the value. And we did this earlier with functions. So if I had something like, hey, you know, f of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 4. And I'm like, well, what does f of 2 equal? And so we had to input the 2 and plug it in. You know, go 2 times 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 4. Then you get an answer. So that'd be what? 8 subtract 10 plus 4. Negative 2 plus 4. Looks like f of 2 comes out to be 2. It's kind of weird, but I just made it up. So something you can do is using synthetic division, you can almost work backwards a little bit. And so it says on number five, it says, hey, use synthetic substitution to evaluate the polynomial for the given value. Um, your remainder, whatever you get when you do synthetic division, your remainder is going to be the value of the function when you input this. So when I plug a one-half into that equation, my remainder is going to be what the answer is. So like right now, I'm trying to figure out what p of one-half is going to be. And I don't want to plug one half in there. I mean, think about it. You're going to have to stick a one half in here, and here, and here, add all that together. So sometimes synthetic substitution is like a lot easier. So I'm going to just use that one half. And I'm going to just run this. I have four, two. Notice I'm missing an x squared. There's no x squared term, so I got to put a zero in there. Three and five. And let's just run one half through here and see what happens. So slide my 4 down. 1 half times 4 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 1 half times 4 is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. Half of 2 is 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. Half of 4 is 2. And 5 plus 2 is 7. So I know now that P of 1 half is really 7. Now we could verify that. You know, I could go back here and I could stick one half in and say, well, four times one half to the fourth power plus two times one half to the third power plus three times one half plus five. And I can either do all that by hand or I could do it on a graphing calculator. And if we did everything right, it should shake out to be seven. So the remainder theorem just says, hey, that remainder is the value when you plug this, this dividend out here in there. So it's kind of like um, just another way to kind of cheat and get the evaluation 
without actually plugging it in. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, looks like we got a little, a little uh, geometry problem to wrap up. So, last one, find the expression for the width of a rectangle whose length is x minus 2. So I have a rectangle. We're trying to find the width, which I'll just call x. The length is x minus 2. Um, or actually, I'm not going to call it x. I'll just say I don't know what it is. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, but I do know the area. The area is 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 2x plus 12. Well, remember that length times width should equal area. So if I want to find the width, I could just divide the area by the length. You know, the width should just be the area divided by the length. So I'm just going to do this area divided by the length. Here I wrote it fraction-like. I could have put the little divided by symbol and did that. Like that, that's the same thing. But I thought it was faster to do the other one. So let's divide it out and see what we get, see what we had to multiply by. So I'm going to use synthetic division. I'm going to go pretty quick. So um, whenever I'm dividing by x minus 2, well, that's 0 and x equals 2. So I have 2. Now I've got to put my coefficients in. I have x to the thirds. I have x squareds. I have x's. I have numbers. No missing terms, so we're good to go. Play the game. Slide the 2 down. Multiply. Add them up. Multiply, add them up, multiply, and hey, we got a remainder of zero, which is great. So that means that the side length is, remember I got to go one less, so it's 2x squared minus 4x minus 6. There is no remainder, so we just found the width here to that one. All right, hopefully that helps you out, get you ready for the practice. See you.